Well, hello there. Greetings. Welcome to another episode of Storytime. I'm so glad you could make it. On today's episode, well, we're going into some elevators. It's been a while since we've done one of these, so I figured why not? Let's do another one. It's been a while. I don't know about you, but I've always had these things about elevators. Something about them. I just can't explain it. I guess I've read too many stories. And with this video, let's just see what you think about them in the end. With that said and done, let's go into some of these elevators, shall we? Here we go. Number 1. My story happened earlier this year, back in January. It is sort of long, but I added as many details as possible to best paint you a picture of what I experienced. I promise you'll like it. I'm 25 years old, by the way. At the time I moved out from home and was starting my new life on my own, I ended up moving into a townhouse. While living in another state, my sister ended up applying to a university near me. She didn't want to stay on her own, so I offered for her to stay with me. This would be a great way for her to save money and not have to be with any strangers. I really didn't mind it too much. After all, she would keep me company. For the past day or so, my sister has been sick, and she hasn't really been feeling well. On this cold and rainy night, I decided to go to the local pharmacy and get her some medicine. We had just gone to the doctor in the daytime, but I ended up forgetting to pick up one of the medications, so now I have to go get it. I should quickly describe my neighborhood. We are away from town, living in an area that doesn't really see too much traffic. Because of this, you don't really expect to see too many people, especially late at night. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, I make my way out of the house and walk over to the parking structure. That's where my car was parked. It wasn't too far away. I just had to go down this small little alleyway, and then I arrive at the parking. This parking structure was about five stories tall. I'm not sure why it was necessary to have so many parking spots. It's not like we get many people out here. In the end, my best guess was that it has to do with the preparation of the new apartments. They would be arriving next year. So right when the elevator opens, I see a large tall man just standing there. I found it strange to run into anybody right now. He looked very intimidating, and I've never seen him before. I guess it didn't help that I watched a bunch of movies, and that made me paranoid. I wasn't a very tall person, so I guess I wasn't feeling too comfortable. Also, it was late in the evening, so that made matters even worse. Since he had gone down to the bottom floor, I was expecting him to leave and exit. I waited there for a few seconds, expecting him to step out, but he just stands there staring. I had no choice, so against my better judgment, I step inside as the doors close behind me. He wanted to know which floor I wanted to go to, and I told him to go to the third floor. I'm not sure if he did it on purpose or not, but I hadn't realized that he pushed the button for the top floor. Seriously, this was one of the slowest elevators I ever knew. That was one of the things I found annoying about it. As we're making our way up, he said something that sent me chills. You know, wouldn't it be funny if you went missing tonight and you didn't return home? I wasn't sure what to think. I sort of just give a nervous laughter and thought he'd been joking, but one look at his face, I could tell he was being serious. When the two of us finally arrived at the top floor, I was expecting him to leave. Maybe he just wanted to get to his floor first and not deal with waiting for me. Impatient much, friend? Whatever. When the doors opened, I saw there were no cars up there and he hadn't moved. What was his issue? Was his plan to have him follow him up here? Regardless, I didn't know what to do as I stood there frozen, pondering my next option. I say, Yeah, so my car is on the third floor. You can go ahead and exit. Have a nice night, sir. It was nice to meet you. Oh, silly me. I thought I pressed the button for the third floor. Come on, let's go ahead and go together, shall we? I didn't want to stay here anymore. I made the decision to exit. I would take the stairs instead. I should have done that to begin with. I was expecting him to follow me, 
but instead he just stays there inside smiling as the doors close behind me. Quickly I make a run towards the stairs and decided to leave. I had a feeling he would be waiting for me on the third floor, so instead I would leave and head back and go to the security office. I make a mad dash down the stairs, trying to get out of there before he sees me. Then when I quickly pass the third floor, I saw him waiting by one of the cars. I didn't stay around to see what he had planned, but I saw what looked to be some sort of blade in his hand. I knew now if I had stayed on that elevator with him, it would have been bad news. I make my way down the rest of the steps, and immediately, I run down the alleyway and go to the security office. When I arrived, I think I may have surprised them. I explained to them what had happened, and so one of them gets on the phone and calls officers. I watched as they arrive minutes later, and they want to know where I had last seen them. They tell me they have been searching for somebody similar, and they were supposed to be dangerous. By the description I gave them, they were pretty confident it was him. They didn't turn on the sirens as not to startle him, and so they slowly made their way up there. Soon enough, I see that they had gotten him and they take him away. You can just imagine how I felt that night. Still, even with all of that happening, I made my way to get my sister's medicine and return back. She, of course, wanted to know what all the commotion was about, and when I tell her, she was obviously worried. I told her nothing happened to me, which eventually calmed her down. So, yes, in the end, it was quite the experience, not what I was expecting to find in an elevator. Number 2. This happened back in high school, when I was a senior. This was back in the 1980s. I still remember this because my aunt and my uncle were having a birthday party for my grandma. I had ended up staying home while my mom and dad went over earlier to go help with the food. I told my parents I was going to invite my girlfriend and we would meet up with them later in the evening. I ended up calling my girlfriend Alice. I told her to meet me at the bus station, and from there we would take the bus over. We were old-fashioned, and since my parents had taken the car, I didn't have a way to get to the bus station. I end up leaving my house at around 5 and make my walk over to the bus stop. It's about 10 minutes away from my house. From there, it's another 20 minutes to the bus station. I had my Walkman with me, and I was listening to some music while making my way over there. I get to the bus stop and notice a man with sunglasses and a dark hat. He sat on the bench. I didn't mind him too much, but I did keep my distance. It seemed like something was off. The bus eventually arrives and I go to find a seat. That man that sat at the bench, remember him? Of course he sat right next to my seat. Mind you, there were plenty of open seats on the bus, and I mean plenty. He tried to make short conversation with me, but I just gave him short answers and tried to ignore him for the most part. The entire drive over there he just kept staring at me and he wouldn't stop talking. As soon as we arrived at the bus stop, I was hoping it would end up staying, but of course he ends up following me off the bus. Well, alright, now the next thing I was thinking was, This is probably just his stop. I'm sure he's gonna go the other way, right? He doesn't. He waits until I'm a fair distance away and then he starts following me. Let me describe this bus station. It's more like a transportation center. Here you could also find the train that would take you to other towns. In summary, I had to take an elevator in order to get to the side where I would meet up with my girlfriend. As I start the walk toward the elevator, he's still behind. The doors to the elevator open slowly. Of course, right as the doors are about to close, he makes his way inside. It didn't help that this elevator had no other person inside, and it was at the very far end of the transportation center. He once again starts talking to me, but this time he changes the conversation completely. He starts going off about how he has anger issues, and he said he would do bad things to people that got him angry. One thing was for sure, I didn't want to get on his bad side. He says, You know, you made me pretty angry when you decided not to talk to me on the bus. Do you want to know what happens to those that make me angry? And no, he didn't say he was going to put me on the list. 
And if anybody gets that reference, you're amazing. No, one thing was for certain now. I knew I was in trouble. He then began to smile and laugh like a lunatic. I remember him trying to grab my arm before I exited, but I had gotten away just in time. With the elevator door open, I make a mad dash until I find a couple of security guards. I tell them about what happened, but by the time they go and look for him, he's gone. They never did find him, but it was honestly one of the most concerning moments of my life. I finally did meet up with my girlfriend, and she could tell I wasn't feeling too well. Honestly, I didn't want to admit what I'd gone through, but when I told her, she was just happy I was safe, and nothing else happened to me. We make it to the party just fine, and for the most part, I try to forget it. Number 3 all right, so I heard you wanted to hear my elevator story. Well, I'm here to tell you all about it. I was studying in Australia at the time. You see, I'd spent my first two years at the university in Arizona, and I decided to transfer. Of course, I was still fairly new to the campus, since it was my first semester there, but I was slowly learning how to get my way around. The campus itself was pretty large, and with a bunch of twists and turns, Finding your way around there wasn't exactly too easy. I was living off of campus in some dorms with a couple of roommates. For the most part, the area was pretty nice, but it does get lonesome at nighttime. Of course, the campus security always recommended that we walk with somebody else. Something that made the students aware of that information was that somebody had actually broken into one of the dorms. It was strange considering that you need a security car to get inside the building. The building was set up so when you enter, the doors locked behind you. My best guess was that somebody disguised themselves as a student, and so they had somebody open the door for them. With that information out of the way, let's get on to the main part of the story. The film course I was taking usually runs late on Thursdays, so at 9pm when we're all dismissed, there's usually nobody on campus. You also have to remember that since many students choose their schedules to be Monday through Thursday, you would be less likely to find anyone. Once out, I went to the little convenience store on the other side of campus and I go get some food. I usually did this since they closed at 9.30, so I wanted to get something quickly. Turns out I ended up staying a little bit longer than I should have, because now I'm leaving around the time they closed. Now I'm making my way back to the dorm building, alone in the dark. We had plenty of lighting, but by now the university looked abandoned, minus seeing a few people. I do make it to the dorm building just fine. That's where I see another student. They're just arriving and they're swiping their key. We walk down the hallway and we arrive to the elevator. It was open. How convenient. What I found inside? Not so convenient. I find a man standing in the elevator. He didn't look like he lived there. In fact, I recognized him. He was a man that lived in the rundown areas. I had seen him on occasion when walking over to get some pizza with my friends. Apparently, I was the only one to feel strange about him, because the other student didn't say anything at all. He had his headphones in, so I can imagine he must have been listening to peaceful music or something. The first thing I did notice was this man hadn't even pushed which floor he wanted to go to. Unfortunately for me, I was on floor 10, one of the last floors of the building. Surely I would be in there all by myself. As we start making our way up, I was hoping the number 4 button the other student had pressed was a mistake. Maybe he would still be on the elevator with me. Sadly, I didn't recognize him from my floor, so I was pretty sure he would be stepping out at floor number four. That's what he did. I now watched as he stepped away. Yes, I know I should have followed him, but I decided to take a chance. Looking back on that, it was a big mistake. I figured that on the rare chance he knew somebody on the 10th floor, I would just stay calm. I didn't want him to become aware I was worried. Besides, he could either go one way or the other, and I would just choose the opposite way. With the slow way up, we finally arrive on floor 10. I now watch as he steps out and goes the other way. My room was on the opposite side. You can imagine I take that opportunity and run over to my room. 
I just couldn't get anybody to open the door since my roommates were out for the weekend. Finally, I start to calm down and tell myself that I once again overreacted. I do that a lot, actually. About 15 minutes later, I get a call from my friend. She lives on the third floor, and she told me she needed the notes for a test. Of course, she wanted to know if I could bring them. I didn't want to go at first, but I figured that the man was probably gone by now. With that, I slowly open the door and look both ways. The man wasn't there. Sweet, now was my chance. I make my way to the elevator once again, and I make it down to the third floor. As I arrived, I see a small group of students waiting to enter the elevator. And guess what? Remember our stranger friend from earlier? He was there waiting with them to go inside the elevator. I was guessing he was going to be doing the same thing. I quickly make it over to my friend, and when she opens the door, I tell her about what had happened. We called the security and we told them about what I had seen. Sadly, they never did find him, and I never heard anything else about him. I haven't seen him around town either, so I never did get an answer to everything. Number 4 This story happened when I was taking a cruise to Alaska with my family. This was back in 2005, when I was 15. Also with me were my cousins Heather and Anthony. My parents had invited them to join us. They were the same age as me. So we're in our room watching a movie when our parents said they were going to go down to the restaurant. Obviously we weren't allowed to go, so we stayed back in the room. Of course, with my parents gone, this would be the perfect opportunity to go and explore the cruise liner. Even though it was already getting close to 10 at night, we weren't tired whatsoever. It's like whenever you're on vacation, the excitement ends up keeping you up. That is, of course, until you eventually get home. You sleep like a baby for a few days. Anyways, we go out into the hallway and we make our way around. At some point, I remember wanting to get some snacks from the vending machines, and I told my cousins to wait for me. Long story short, in my effort to find my snacks, I, of course, ended up getting lost. I had no idea where I was now. This was a very concerning thing for me. It seemed like all the families were down at the restaurants, and this place was honestly like a maze. Everything looked the same. As I spend another few minutes looking for the elevator, I finally find one. Being so focused and going to see my parents, I hadn't paid attention to one important detail. There was already somebody inside the elevator. Since this place was so large, I just thought he might be going down to the restaurant, or somewhere else. Excuse me, but do you need to go to the restaurants too? The way he said it sent me chills. Quickly, I run out of there, and I hear him laughing as the doors close. When I make it to the restaurant, I find my mom and dad and tell them about what happened. They were obviously very worried, and quickly we make our way up to the room. Inside, we find my two cousins, and they have a look of concern on their face. I thought it was because we had gotten lost. It was a little bit of that, but they also said on their quest to find me, they found a man who said he knew where I was, but as he started to lead them to a lonely, quiet area, they ended up running away from him. We saw the man one last time after that, but we had seen him with security, and they were talking to him. I'm not sure if he was planning on doing something, or he was just trying to be friendly, but I guess we'll never truly know. Number 5. This story happened to me when I was on summer vacation. If I remember correctly, I was about 16 years old. I was with my friend's family, and they invited me to go along with them to go to a resort right by the ocean. This was the first time I'd ever done something like this, so you can imagine my surprise and joy when they told me about it. This resort featured everything you could imagine. Swimming pools, the beach, spas, buffets, room service, the entire thing. The first night we arrived, we go to the rooms and we get some sleep after a long plane ride. The next morning, we get on a shuttle with another group of visitors, and we spend the entire day in the nearby town. We visit nearby landmarks, go to the local shops, 
and I even take some pictures with some of the animals we saw. All in all, it was a great time. You can imagine how much fun me and my friend Maria were having on this vacation. With all the fun activities of the day, it now started to get late. With it now getting close to 7pm, we now take the 30 minute shuttle back. That's what takes us back to the hotel. On the way over there, I'd become aware of a man. I hadn't seen him with the group when we first arrived in town. At first, I was thinking that maybe he was an employee of the hotel, but I hadn't seen him in a uniform like the rest of the staff. We eventually arrived and everybody goes their own way. By now, me and Maria had distracted ourselves and we forgot about the stranger. Maria's parents were pretty tired and they decided they wanted to go straight to the room. The thing is, me and Maria wanted to get some food before we go back inside. They agreed, but just told us not to get back too late. Thus, we make our way over to the VIP area and get some quick snacks. After that, we start heading our way over to the elevators. Feeling happy we were having the greatest time of our life, we wait for the elevators to open. We were going to watch a movie before going to sleep, so I couldn't wait to get back up there soon. Right when the elevator opens, we see that man from the shuttle. I don't think he noticed us at first, but in a matter of seconds, he gets back on the elevator. Great, here we are once again with this stranger. In that very moment, I knew this was bad news. Remember, here we are in a place we've never been to before, and so we don't know this area too well, let alone the people that worked here. The entire time we were there, he had his hands behind his back, almost like he was hiding something. You can imagine how nervous we had become. We had already pressed the button to go to our floor, but he hadn't pressed a button yet. Either he was going to the same floor, or something else was going on here. The elevator actually opened on the fifth floor, two floors before ours. Nonetheless, we take the opportunity to run. He now starts running after us as we make our way down this empty corridor. We look back and he takes something out. I just couldn't tell what it was due to the lighting. As we turn the corner, we see a group of people. They were obviously surprised to see how nervous we are, but as we wait there in anticipation of him turning the corner, he doesn't arrive. As we wait there with this group, we just so happen to see a security guard walking by. Quickly, we walk up to him and we explain our situation. He gets on his radio and tells the main office about what had happened, but in the end, they never do find anyone. It really gets to me when I think back to that event. Elevators can be convenient, but in this case, I think we'll take the stairs. Besides, the exercise is pretty nice. Number 6. This actually just happened a week ago. Me and my girlfriend were on a road trip across the country, and we were visiting national parks and small towns. This was a dream we've had for the longest time, and finally it was something we were doing. We had our fair share of adventures and stories, but this one would top all of them off. This happened in a town that we ended up stopping in. We made a stop, and after a long day, we wanted to find an inn we could stay at to get some sleep. We spent an hour calling the local motels and inns, trying to get a room, but they were all full. I guess it didn't help that this was summertime, the time when families vacation a lot. Great, I didn't want to spend the night in our car. It's not exactly the best sleeping arrangement. Finally, after driving around for another hour, we did find an old little inn. At this point, we would just settle for anything, so we just decided to stay there. Once we decided we would stay there, we go to a small little restaurant that's across the street. We would get some food and after, we would end up going back. Turns out we ended up spending an hour there, and thankfully nobody had checked in. Though looking back, that wasn't really necessary. Let me go ahead and describe this inn to you. Sadly, it was the only one we could find, but besides the little diner across the street, it's away from the town. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It was four stories tall, and it was your typical inn, where the hallways and doors are on the outside. Essentially, anybody could walk up to the building. In all that time we were there, we only saw about five cars. I'm guessing they belonged to the employees and some people that were staying there. 
Tired from a long day, we check in and we make our way to the top floor. They were the cheapest and I was looking to save some money, so why not? Even though it was pretty lonely up there, we would end up taking our chances. We go back to our car and grab our backpack and a few things, and now we lock the car. From there, we start heading over to the elevator. While walking over there, we did find it strange that all the lights of this motel were so dark, except for the elevators. They seemed to be brand new and they were very bright. One thing we did notice that was odd was when we talked to the man at the front desk, he told us the elevator wasn't working. He said they wouldn't be fixed until tomorrow. How strange. Now they seem to be working? I tried not to mind it. We make our way inside this eerie elevator, and we press the button for the fourth floor. At this point, we're just so tired and we couldn't wait to relax. As soon as the doors opened on the fourth floor, we start walking out, but we don't even take a few steps. In front of us, at the very far end of the hallway, we can see somebody standing over there. We couldn't see too well due to the lighting, but it appeared he was holding something sharp. Immediately, we get back in the elevator and we press the button for the first floor. Meanwhile, here comes this stranger. It was almost like something out of a movie, I tell you. Thankfully, unlike in the movies, we get the elevator to close way before he gets to us. While making the way down, we were just hoping we wouldn't run into him. As we nervously wait for the doors to open, we make a run to the car, disregarding that we already checked in. As we get inside, we see the man now making his way down the stairs. Let's just say we got out of there and ended up spending the night in the car. We never bothered looking into what happened there. Whether or not he was just playing a joke on us, and the man at the front desk was in on it, we won't really know. Next time, we'll just make sure to avoid places like that. Oh yeah, and elevators too. The stairs are just fine. Number 7 my story is a little shorter than the others, but when you hear it, you'll see why I don't really enjoy elevators so much. It's really more unexplained than anything, so any of you that are into that sort of thing, you'll like my story. I'm currently in college, and I moved into some older apartments. I was only there for about three weeks. Now, this building has ten floors, but I lived on floor number seven. Because of this, it's easier just to take the elevator. One thing about these elevators is that it had a window you can look outside of. So, of course, if there's still sunlight, you can see outside. At nighttime, it's the complete opposite. One night, I was out with my friends getting some food, and after staying out later than expected, I didn't get back to my apartment until around midnight. I get to the lobby and wait for the elevator to arrive. As I wait there, somebody walks up to me and says, You might want to take the stairs. The elevator's been acting up this afternoon. The lady at the front office told me they would fix them in the morning. Great, so now I had to make my way up the stairs. I start making my way up until I arrived on the fifth floor. When I get there, I start hearing a very quiet laughter. I couldn't really tell you where the noise was sounding off from since I was more in a rush to get to my room at that point. When I got up to the next floor, I'm hearing the noise once again, but it's louder. I had one more floor to go, so although tired, I make my way up one more floor. On my floor, I arrive to face the elevator. It's right across the stairs. Guess what happens next? They open and I hear the same familiar laughter. I thought they weren't working. Anyways, the thing is, when they open, nobody was in there, and I no longer hear the noise. You can just imagine how I reacted. I run right towards my room and I call security. I tell them about what happened, but they just sort of laugh it off. I sure didn't find it funny. He explains to me and says, Yeah, that happens sometimes. This apartment has some history to it, and it's seen some passings in the past. We usually just called her Laughing Jane. Sometimes the elevators malfunction, so we just end up fixing them in the mornings. I couldn't believe it, and I still feel like there was actually somebody there. Let's just say that in the end, I ended up canceling my lease for the room and left shortly after that. I didn't even bother looking into the history of that place, 
I just didn't want anything to do with it anymore. Well, hello there. Looks like you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't worry. We'll be back next time for more. So, tell me, what did you think? You still like elevators? I'd rather take the stairs now. So, tell me, any experiences you've had in elevators? Let me know. Other than that, have yourself an amazing day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.